Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be making a pot roast. And this is a beef pot roast and it's very easy. It's simple to make. All you need to do is start with simple ingredients and you'll have it. All right, let's get started. Okay, so this is the ingredients that we're gonna be working with today when we're making the pot roast. I always get my pot roast and the double pack that comes from Sam's. And really, you know, beef is really hot right now. So I get this pack and this right here has two pretty good big sizes in them and it was $32 and some change. So maybe I probably could have got them a little bit cheaper from Ingles. I love to get my beef from Ingles. They have wonderful roasts. Um, what you call it, the chuck steak. I get the cube steak from them. Oh my goodness. And my beef stew. I like to get that or my stew meat. When I'm getting ready to make hash, I always go to Ingles because they have nicer cuts. It's streaked really good all the way through, just like this one from Sam's. And they're just, they're just good and tender. So once this roast is gonna cook for about three and a half hours on the stove top, and once it gets to the last maybe hour and a half, we're gonna put the vegetables in. I don't have any carrots, but that's fine. We're gonna put onions, celery, and potatoes in that. We're gonna brown it in this butter. And this is some of the spices that we're gonna use. This is my homegrown sage that I have ground up while well, I just smash it with my hand because this is some right here that I've gotten out of the garden that's ready. And what I've done is some of the leaves were a little bit browning these, look how big these leaves are. Look at that. I'll tell you, it's nothing like fresh sage that you get from your own garden that you grow. If you can't get it from your own garden, you know, you can go to the grocery store in the produce section and they do have fresh herbs and it's in a little pack and all you have to do is dry them out in the oven. Be careful not to burn it because that totally changes the flavor, <laughs> but you have to just dry them out in the oven and then you just put them in your food, dressings, whatever. So we're gonna be putting one can of French onion soup. I would put some consomme in here too, a can of consomme, and that's just really concentrated beef broth that Campbell's make. But since I don't have any of that, I'm going to put the Noor beef bouillon in there. Black pepper, salt, accents. I'm gonna put some um, Tony Ketcher's. I always, uh, Tony Sassurades. <laughs> <laughs> seasoning in it. I called it Tony Catchers for a long time until I saw a commercial that taught me how to say Tony Sachet. Okay, that's how you say that. Okay, and some minced garlic and that's gonna be it. Okay, first we're going to go to the stove top and we're gonna get these browned after I wash them up. I'm giving them a bath and then we'll be right back. I moved everything over here to the stove so that way you can see what I'm putting in the pot. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is brown both of these rolls. Mind you, the one that I'm cooking in the crock pot, I'm not going to even show you the ingredients and stuff. I'm gonna focus on the stove top. Roast. I looked in um, online to see if I could find any recipes for stove top pot roast. And I couldn't find that much. So I'm just gonna make this, you know, similar to how we used to make it when I was growing up. My mama taught me how to make the first pot roast. And it was on the stove top, it wasn't in the oven. Most of the time now, every recipe that I look for on Pinterest was in the oven. You browned it on the stove top and then you put it in the oven or you put it in the crock pot. So what I'm gonna do is show you how I make stove top pot roast. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is put my butter in the pan and I'm using this Irish butter. This tastes so good. You guys, if you ever try this Irish butter, it doesn't matter what brand you use, but most of the time I get this right here and it's delicious. Okay, so I'm going to let this butter melt. Just don't pay attention to that pan over there. Pay attention to this one. Okay, so I'm gonna let it melt. And once it's clarified, that means once all the cream is cooked off of the butter, then I'm going to add some garlic. And I'm going to start browning my roast.
Okay, once this is melted and clarified, I'll be right back. All right, I'm gonna put about a tablespoon of my minced garlic in here. my meat a bath and what I did was to dry off the excess water. I'm just going to sit it down in there. And what we're going to do is let this roast brown for about maybe 10 minutes on each side. I'm going to turn it down some so that it won't get too dark. I don't want to burn it. And once it's brown, then I'll add my spices and everything that I'm gonna add to it at this point. All right, let's get it turned over. Put the bigger meat, the bigger roast in this pan. Okay. Now it's browning, but it's not browning the way that a frying pan would. This is the first time I've made a pot roast in this pot. But we're gonna go ahead and stick with it. We're gonna let that cook for about 10 more minutes and then we're gonna be done with it. As you can see, the, pan, the, the roast that I cooked, that I'm browning, and this one on the left is already good. Look at that, good and brown. What I may do is take this and put it in here. So let's go ahead and switch pans. Okay, so since we're not browning too good on, in this pot, we're gonna switch it out. There we go. We're gonna finish browning it over here. And once it's finished browning, we'll be back. Okay, let's give it a flip. Now that's prettier. Okay, so now it is brown on both sides. We're gonna put it back in this pot. And what we're gonna do is take all the drippings from this pan and add it to that pot. Yeah. There we go. Okay, let's turn this burner back on. We're gonna put it on about eight because I want it to come to a good boil once we get everything in here. And then that way, we'll be able to put it on a simmer. That's how it's gonna cook, it's gonna simmer. Don't want it boiling too, too high or too fast. Okay. Okay, we'll move it over a little bit. Ooh, I can't hardly put this down here with my hair. Ow, it's popping top of my head. <laughs> that pan is real deep. Okay, that's good and sealed right there. <laughs> Okay, that's what I'm talking about. That's gonna be really good and flavorful. What I'm gonna do is add my ingredients. First, I'm gonna go ahead and get some liquid in here. This is the one can of French onion soup and camels. Yeah. Let me bring it down just a little bit. When we get ready to make thickener for the gravy, we're not gonna have to worry about putting any type of browning agent in there because it's already gonna be brown enough. Okay, then we're gonna add one cup of water right now. 
one can of water. Probably gonna end up putting about two cans. Because, well, we're gonna put more than that because what I wanna do is, or what everybody wants to do is get this right here just covered with water. So that's two. just a little bit and I will definitely as always have the recipe in the description so I may flubber a little bit during the cooking process but you'll have the actual amount of water in the description all right now we're gonna go ahead and start adding our spices now this is gonna be one teaspoon of accent I, you know I always say with my recipes you don't have to use accent if you don't want to I like to use it one teaspoon of Tony Kircher's uh, Tony Saturay's <laughs> Creole seasoning. I'm so used to saying it that way that I always say it that way first before I correct myself. Sorry. Tony Saturay's. Okay, we're going to put one teaspoon no, let me see. Half of a teaspoon of black pepper and this is Sam's brand. And this is a basic recipe. Okay, that's one, that's half a teaspoon. Then we're gonna add my salt. We're gonna add one teaspoon. Because I want this roast to be flavored all throughout. Then we're gonna add one whole tablespoon of beef bouillon. This is gonna take the place of me adding my concentrated consomme my concentrated beef consomme. Okay, so that's how much we're gonna add to that. Then we're gonna add one teaspoon of my sage, my homegrown sage, one teaspoon. This is the equivalent of what you get in the store, the rub sage. It has all those beautiful pieces in it. Okay, so it's boiling kind of fast. We're gonna turn it on seven, because we're just gonna have a simmer. All right, let me get my water ready and I'll be right back. All right, y'all. I know a lot of steam is on this. I'm sorry. It's gonna stop boiling so much. Um, it looks really good and rich so far, but we don't want it to cook at this speed right now. It's cooking, it's boiling too fast. So what I'm gonna do, I turn it down to, um, to medium heat. I started out at eight and I want to cook this, simmer it for three hours and it's gonna be done and it's gonna be tender. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish adding the water. I forgot how many cans I've added so far, but I'm gonna fill it up with this here, some more until it's covered. This is a deep pot. Now I put three already. That's four, five, six, say one more, seven. Okay, so this is seven cans of water, okay? That's how much you wanna put in there to start with, okay? You're gonna come and check this probably every hour. It's gonna cook three hours. You're gonna come and check it every hour to make sure you don't need to add more water. Um, and we're gonna give the flavor a little taste, see what it tastes like. And we're going to add some onions and celery in here right now. I know I said I was gonna add the vegetables at the, um, at the last hour, but I want to go ahead and get the celery flavor in there. So what I've done is chopped up two ribs of celery and one whole medium onion, and we're just gonna add that to the pot. And like I said, this is a pot roast, a stovetop pot roast. 
You can still cook it in the stove. Uh, on top of the stove. You don't have to cook it in the oven all the time. Look at how rich that gravy is. Oh my goodness. Um, when I get finished, when it gets done, I'm probably going to make a um, thickener with just flour and water. Oh, you know what? Let me taste it a little bit. Let me taste it. I'm just going to taste the spoon. And it has some good flavor to it. Mm, it does. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I need to add some more beef bouillon to that. And that's exactly what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to add another tablespoon. We only added a teaspoon of salt. And let's see, I didn't put anything else. Now, the Tony Sachere's uh, Creole seasoning has salt in it, but everything else wasn't salt. So that is going to be two tablespoons of your Nor beef bouillon. If you use the consomme, the canned beef consomme, you would put two cans of the beef consomme in here. Okay, so since we don't have that, we're going to improvise by putting the bouillon in there. So let's get it stirred again. And what we're gonna do right now is let it come to a boil. And we're gonna get it, get our temperature regulated to see what we're gonna have it simmering on for the next three hours. Okay, let me put the top on here. And I'll be back when it starts simmering again and that way we'll know what temperature we're gonna have the eye on. Okay, I just wanted to show you guys, this is Kitchen Brocade. This is what I grew up using. My grandmother, Lucille Lewis, introduced me to this, and my mom uses it all the time. And this is just browning and seasoning sauce. If you have a pale gravy and you want it to be thick and rich, then you'll always put some of this in here. Now, there's another one, I can't remember, it has an orange label. I've used that before when I can't find this in the store. Um, but this right here you can find at Ingles. I don't know about Walmart. I've never looked for it in there. But with this gravy, we're not going to have, when, this, when I'm ready to make the gravy for this roast, we're not going to have to because it's brown, good and rich. But this is what you need to look for right here. Kitchen bouquet. Here you go. Okay, so we are boiling pretty good. Like that right there. Okay, you see that? What we have the eye on now is seven. What we're gonna do is turn it on six and we're gonna let it continue to cook on six for about 45 more minutes. And then we're gonna come back and check it. And um, you, come, you come back to check it to make sure that it has enough water, enough liquid, because you don't want it to boil all the way down, okay? You wanna make sure that it's simmering, not boiling rapid because it'll cook too fast and then it won't be tender. All right, so we'll be back after these few 45 minutes. I just came downstairs and it's cooking pretty good. I turned the eye on four. So it's been cooking like that. It's simmering good like that. Um, I'm gonna leave it on there. We have plenty of water, but I'm gonna go ahead and open it up just in case. Yeah, it's cooking good. It's plenty of water. And that's how it's gonna cook for the next hour. All right. Now maybe the next hour we may need to add some water to it. Maybe not. But I'll see you in an hour. Okay, time to check the roast again. Look at that, y'all. Let's give it a little. Oh, look at that. That thing is so tender, y'all. Okay, the last hour, we are going to just be putting in the potatoes. I already have the onions and the celery in there and look at how good that looks. Okay, so we're just gonna put the potatoes. And this is like three large to medium Idaho potatoes because they're gonna be creamy. And that's all we're gonna put in there because we're gonna have some rice with it too. I really wish I had some carrots. It would be really, really pretty and colorful. So we're gonna serve this roast with some rice and some green beans, and we will be back in an hour. Look at that. We're gonna go ahead and turn it off because our pot roast is done. I have 
everything in there. Except for carrots. Look at that. That potato, those potatoes that are in here are just soaking the goodness. And our roast is really good. Look there, it's about to fall apart. All right, let's see. It's been an hour, so the potatoes are done. They're fork tender. Fork goes right through there. And what we're gonna do is let it cool all the way down, and then we're gonna give it a taste. Look at that. That is delicious. And what's gonna be really good is when I make some leftovers with this right here. A sandwich with leftover pot roast is delicious. thing that may be a bit of a put off is checking on it every hour but there's nothing like a good old-fashioned pot roast okay we're gonna let it cool down and then we'll be back okay guys I almost forgot I have to put a thick note on this for you so what I'm gonna do what I have done you put about four or five teaspoons of self rising flour in here. You can use cornstarch if you want to, but this is just a good season screw, good season salad dressing. Okay, you're gonna fill it with water, and all the way, but you're gonna turn the eye up so you can have it really good and hot. And then we're going to push the roast to the side. Let me do it up here on this side so you can see it better. Do it up here at the top. Okay, what we're gonna do is Pour some of this mixture. And we're gonna just stir it. And don't worry about the lumps because the lumps will come out. You see how fast that got thick? Yeah. The lumps are gonna disappear, so don't worry about that. You wanna shake your flour and water really, really good. That way you won't see any lumps. You won't have any lumps. And we do have a strainer over there, so if there's something that doesn't come out, we'll strain it out. use cornstarch or you can use the flour nothing is stuck stuck to the pan see I've got a little strainer right here and we're gonna just strain out the ugliness I'm gonna turn it back down There we go. Okay, y'all. Now we're gonna let it cool down some, and when we come back, we'll put it on a platter and plate it up.
our total cooking time was about three hours and 45 minutes. And that included browning it, cooking it on the stove top, to putting it on the platter. And this is my stove top beef pot roast. All right, guys, this concludes this video. I hope you'll give this recipe a try. Please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And if you want to be notified each time I upload a new video, please hit that notification bell below. Thanks and God bless.